Good evening. Wonderful to see you all here. So as you understand already, I'm the oldest uh, prodigy. <laughs> 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 yeah, and uh, since this definition kind of floats uh, in the internet, I cannot wait yes. till these words will be pronounced when I'm like 86. <laughs> um, and I will crawl onto the stage. <laughs> so, uh, we went today with our wonderful Lithuanian friends to Trakai, and when we were coming back, returning to the city, there was something uh, poignantly endearing about recognizing architectural styles uh, that obviously uh, bear familiarity, right? This is people of my accent created. <laughs> the dimmest, the bleakest, uh, the most proudly ugly buildings of your city. <laughs> And I dare say that poetry of my language shares the same qualities in a way. It insists on being absurdly formal, even today in 2014. We think we should rhyme, nobody understands why, <laughs> but we do that. And also we only write poetry uh, according to some rubrics. We write about love, we write about meaning of poetry, and greatness of Russia, and this is what we do. So, being a prodigy and all that, I decided to revolutionize uh, this tradition. Uh, and the first poem that I will uh, read, when I wrote it, I, I was, as it happens, and since most of you happen to be, poets and writers, you know the special feeling uh, that you do something for the first time. And when I wrote this poem about tomatoes, I, I thought it to be uh, acutely special. And of course, what happened after that, that at every reading, uh, somebody would come to me and whisper, I also have a poem about tomatoes. So, anyway. So I will read three poems uh, written in Russian. I only write in that language. Uh, and translated by my friend uh, Kathy Sipella, with whom I uh, just published another book of poetry with a uh, somewhat topical title, Relocations. Right, topical for the situation when we sit on the boat that doesn't move. <laughs> so kind of being static and dynamic at the same time. So I'll read English uh, first and then Russian, I guess. Tomatoes and sunflowers. Finally, in the bright air, the tomatoes have reached their peak the tomatoes and sunflowers. Soon they will be caned by September school teacher and explode in tart juices across the grass. But for now it's as though the god of things held his breath and the rocking, the flaring won't quit and the beginning of dying drags on and on. It's too soon. It's too soon to bury me. That invisible cusp where summertime touches autumn sweeter than anything. When you know it started the dimming down and the world will go motionless. Monotone. For now it's tensed and commingling elements. Elements, scarlet, orange, emerald, emerald, scarlet, orange, copper, go quiet, 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 gasp on the verge of a dead faint at this final resting place. Brimming, branches, shadows, liniments, flavor and scent, not quite stench, not quite stench, 
yet just exhaling grasses black brown blue then down from the sky a gust there is a rush there is a rush shuddering but as soon as the picture completes itself and perspective shrinks to zero everything collapses you know do you want to know do you really want to know what will stay with me the spider web its dire embroidery the tomato the crack that won't close again half minute foretaste of ashes calamity i was given it all i was given it all none of it promised me so now i will read the same poem as it was born um, and actually I really do think uh, I do not only tell this to my students but actually it's something I believe in that uh, there is something to listening poetry in a language that doesn't make much sense to you because I think that listening to poetry is a very strange exercise anyway and uh, we don't care, we don't care to understand uh, and to get the sense so помидоры и подсолнухи наконец определились в ярком воздухе помидоры помидоры и подсолнухи вот сейчас сентябрь дидактик вскрикнет розги и все взорвется едким соком на траву. Но пока, как будто задержал дыхание бог вещей и колыхание, полыхание не прекращаются и длится, длится раннее умирание. О да! еще живу. Эта точечка невидная, касание между осенью и летом. Слаще сладкого. Знаешь, вот она начнется угасание, станет все тогда неважно, одинаково, станет все тогда недвижно, одинаково, но пока напряжено вокруг и замерло обращение частиц. Алло, оранжево, изумрудно, буро, перед тем, как замертво дышит, 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 успокоенное заживо. Все сполна на росты, тени, линии, вкус и запах, но не вон еще дыхание, травы черные, коричневые, синие, Ветер с неба, ускорение, содрогание, но как только эта видимость исполнится, и как только расстояние нарушится, все падет. Ты знаешь, что запомнится? Все падет. Ты знаешь, что запомнится? Паутина оскорбительная, кружевца, помидор, не заживающая, трещина. Полминуты в предвкушении дыма, ужаса. Все удалось мне, ведь не было обещано. The second poem uh, is called uh, The Translator One. Uh, it's a kind of a predictable uh, subject for again the situation of relocation uh, you've been writing poetry in that kind of language then you find yourself in Amherst, Massachusetts <laughs> you attempt to forgo all kinds of questions and you absolutely need to publish, right? This is what we need to do don't ask me uh, and you need a translator and this is when an interesting thing begins, uh, because we do know that translation is not possible. We believe in it because it's not possible. Um, 
and then this contact emerges. And uh, I've written poems about various versions of this contact, of kind of your poems being replanted into a completely different foreign soil, into a completely different uh, linguistic world, where nothing remains of the original words that you selected somehow for weird idiosyncratic reasons. And that relationship that you have with your translator is, I, I would argue, as I discovered, is maybe one of the most special, uh, because two languages kind of collide. Uh, this is a poem about me meeting one of my translators with whom I've been on, whatever, um, internet for three years. And then I met him and I understood that we basically use the same vocabulary. <laughs> because this is what we came to share. The translator won. We flounder through powdery snow, Siamese t -t 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 twins bound by the tongue's sweet saliva. My round the world dawns break inside you, over you with awkward precision, a tattooed job wet still, traces of blood from the needle, the trace of my writing stains you, stains over you, stays with you, this is how the night I makes things out in the dark, ah, that's an armchair, a cat, the cords of a curtain swaying that must be a ghost not wanting to wake disturb though sometimes his breath or a light bulb's sudden falter gives him away that we both see this ghost is a sure sign there is a shared way to breathe, not breathe, breathe, not breathe, breathe to clear the mounting silence like the ice on the sagging steps. Блуждающие в снежной пудре мы сиамские БББ близнецы с плетённой чистой слюной языка. Мои вокруг словесные зарево проступают в тебе, на тебе с неловкой определенностью. Татуировка, еще не просохшая, с кровкой след иглы по тебе проступает след моего письма. Глаз ночной так вылавливает из мглы, ага, это кресло, кошка, занавески тесьма. Колышется, это верно, призрак не хочет будить, мешать, но иногда дыханием перемены накала в лампочке себя выдает. То, что мы оба видим его, это верный признак единого способа. Дышать, не дышать, дышать, не дышать, дышать, не дышать, дышать, не дышать, удалять на рост и безмолвие, как с дряхлой лесенки лед. Thank you.